This comedian is the host of Stand Up with Pete Dominic on Sirius XM Radio. Please welcome husband, father, and very, very funny man, Pete Dominic! Come on! Come on! More! Yes! Thank you! Thank you very much, everybody. I'll give you another moment or two to get uh, used to my head. I know. Take your time. Take your time. Easy, lady. <laughs> really? Really? You good? All right. Look away if you need to. Can we just agree, bald and white under 40 is creepy? Let it out. I, let, don't feel bad for me. I don't think I'm a bad looking guy. It's not that, it's just a creepy look. It's, it is. <laughs> I have two beautiful daughters. I take them to the park all the time. I'm, I'm there during the day, I'm a comedian, you know, and uh, if I get like 10 feet away from my kids, it looks like I'm just at the playground. <laughs> Picture me at 10 o'clock in the morning at a kid's playground with this head, and I got this creepy, gummy smile, too. I'm always smiling, because I'm with my kids. My, Go ahead, girls, daddy's right over here. Watch every mom and nanny in the park go, let's go, come on, I saw, come on. Let's go, Hi, all right, let's get out of here. I was in denial about losing my hair. You really wanna know what you look like to other people. Here's a, have a child draw you. <laughs> Kids will find your most insecure quality and draw the heck out. You're like, you're like five pounds overweight, not to a kid, you're just a fat circle. <laughs> Really, that's me, uh-huh, yeah. My eight-year-old saw a picture of me with hair, and she actually said, she goes, Daddy, you were handsome. Aww. Yeah, and I was like, well, sweetheart, you were an accident. As long as we're all being honest here, you hurt Daddy. I'm happily married, though I am. Uh, sorry, ladies. No, my wife is awesome. We, uh, we're, we're happily married. She proposed to me, and that's not the best. I mean, it's not traditional, it's fine, right? But it wasn't like thoughtful or romantic. She just walked in one day, she's like, so listen, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so I asked my dad where to get the ring. I always ask your dad that type of question, but my dad's like the cheapest guy in America. My dad actually told me to get the ring at one of those big bulk stores. They all got jewelry departments now, son. I'm like, I only want one ring. I, I don't want bulk rings. So I had one engagement ring. That, how romantic is that? I'll take that engagement ring and a 40-gallon drum of ketchup, yeah. It's all coming together the way I hoped. We argue, that's how we communicate. Um, it's a good relationship, but we argue about everything. Like, the best advice I ever got for a married advice was choose your battles. But I'm such a jerk, like an e egotistical, I, I choose all of them. I wanna be right about everything. I argue everything. One of the things I do is laundry. And I'm not saying I do it well, but I do it. And uh, so one day I'm doing laundry and my wife goes, hey, you're doing laundry? Take the sponges out of the shower and throw them in. <laughs> yeah, you guys are with me. Like, why would she even, like, you're turning on my wife. This audience knows that I'm right, right? You're with me, you're like, I'm like, why would I wash the sponges? She's like, uh, they're dirty? I'm like, I, I mean, I would argue they're covered in soap all the time, I mean. <laughs> So she just washed them. So I'm like, fine, fine, you're right, I'll wash them. So I wash them, but I'm a guy. I threw them in the dryer. And, uh, and they melted. They had a little plastic sponge on a... So I walk upstairs, and now, of course, it's melted. And I hold it up on the string, and this little melted ball, she's like, why would you dry it? I'm like, I'm like why would I wash it in the first place? Uh, the sponges are 99 cents. I mean, I'm, I'm on Nick Mom. We're doing well. Come on. Right? Yeah! Nick Mom Night Out will be back with more from Pete Dominic. <laughs> We've been together uh, 12 years now, and it really is mostly awesome, but uh, she's not here, so I'm gonna talk about her a little more. Um, <laughs> so, we still learn stuff about each other. I mean, you, you always are learning things. Like, I didn't know that she owned, much less at times, would wear a mouth guard to bed at night. You know what this is? Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea that it even existed, this device. She's explaining it to her friend. She's like, yeah, I know what you're saying. Oh my God, yes, I have one. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> Some people grind their teeth at night. Like, by the way, what is that? How angry do you have to be that in the middle of the night? 
<laughs> so one night she just takes this thing out and she like puts it in her mouth. She's like, hey, you want to get together, huh? I'm like, no, do you want to play hockey? What the hell's in your mouth? Are you a goalie? Do you have practice? What is that? But I, I have the sleep disorder too. I have that uh, sleep apnea where you're just breathing and then you're not breathing. Yeah, you almost die in the middle of the night. My buddy's a doctor. He's like, dude, you gotta be careful with that. You better get a, you can, you have to get this mask and wear the mask and it like helps you and like kicks in when you start. I'm like, oh, I'd rather die than wear a mask <laughs> to bed at the end. I'm like, by the way, my wife and I have been together 12 years. Sex is not just happening and spontaneous and magical. My wife's got a mouth guard and I'm dressed like Bane from Batman. <laughs> My, my wife, goes, you want to have sex? And I'm like, yes. Yes, I do want to have sex. But first, I'm going to break your back, Batman. Are you talking about? So uh, last year, we live in the, in the suburbs because we're doing well, and... <laughs> Last year, like 3.30 in the morning, we both hear this like noise in the middle of the night. We both wake up terrified, me more than her, because I'm positive I can't protect my family. <laughs> and like, I'm like, my heart's racing. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. She's like, did you hear that? And I just start laughing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you better go check it out. You're like, why would I check it out? You're the man. I'm like, you're wearing a mouthpiece. You could probably take a couple blows to the head before you go down. So I get up and I go check it out, but like, I don't know how to fight or anything. This is me, I'm walking through my house in my tidy whities with my flashlight app. I'm like, is anybody in here? <laughs> is anybody in the house? And then it went off, so I had to stop and turn it back on. Can you imagine if you're an intruder in my house? And I'm like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> oh, I gotta, uh... I gotta share this with you. This, my wife wrote this text message to me. Like, here's the deal. I, I am the romantic one in our relationship. Yeah, you believe it, right? Yeah, we've heard enough about my wife. I mean, I... <laughs> my wife is really the man. I'm the sensitive romantic one, and I will prove it to everybody here right now. As a matter of fact, this text message I sent my wife is so thoughtful and romantic, some of the women in here are going to want to leave with me. <laughs> you think that's crazy? Wait till I read this. Here's how I can prove that I am the romantic one in my relationship. This is, this is the uh, text message I sent my wife. Here we go. <laughs> Last night, Matt Damon was on Piers Morgan's show, and Piers asked him, if you had one moment of your life you could relive, what would it be? And I thought, my, my moment would be the five hours after I met you. I remember the lush green mountain grass and that enchanting waterfall where we met. And I think that's where I want my ashes to be spread. Aww. This is what my wife texts back to me. <laughs> Matt Damon was on Pierce Morgan last night. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jim the other day, I saw a lady on a stationary bike wearing a helmet. <laughs> so I, I just felt like I had to do something there to, to, to embarrass her. I ended up, I went in the, uh, the pool and grabbed a life preserver and put it around my, my neck. And then I got on the rowing machine next to her. I was like, oh, pretty windy in here, isn't it? Yeah, you're weird. And then I, uh, and then we hooked up, made out for a little while, not a long time. And then I married her eventually. Mm -hmm.